All right, welcome to my FX buddies, the podcast. And I say my FX buddies because I mean, I mean, <laughs> well, because it is my FX buddies, but I say podcast because there's other ways. There's a video, there's a blog. So let me just get into that. All right. So the blog is at myfxbuddies.blogspot.com. There's a transcript for those who can't understand me. RSS.com, but there'll be a link in the description box. Uh, let's see. Also, wherever you are enjoying this content, in the more open info, intro, description, whatever they call it, in that box, there'll be a link to the blog. Okay. All right. What else? Um, Rumble.com video content, of course, my FX buddies and Spotify.com. We can't forget them. They have audio and video and then Apple podcasts, you know, just wherever. So here we are, November 21st. What is it's Thursday, November 21st. 2024 we're still waiting and it's very quiet so i'll just give you a uh summary because the census stuff is boring yes it's very important it's groundbreaking it's gonna change the economy it's everything gold and sparkly for a rock but we don't care about it right but i will say there's been some neat stuff out of it um they uncovered a 120 year old woman a 124 year old woman and they had only made the system to go up to 120 so when they came across um the the other woman which you know they just found her yesterday right so they'll bring that group out that confirms whatever you know um I don't know how you prove if someone's lying about their age or not, but whatever. So they'll go out. But um, so that was pretty neat. And um, they have this fancy call center for the results for people to call and ask questions. And guess who showed up? Sadani just showed up and you should see the women was mostly women working at the call center. They were very respectful. They stood up. And then they sat right back down and, you know, they tried to look like they were working. But um, can you imagine that? You're just at work and boom, there's the prime minister. Uh, so <laughs> but yeah, so it's over. Um, pretty much the, the, the census is over. They lifted the curfew in their direct areas. They still don't want the people going out of like to the next governance until tomorrow um but it went smoothly no attacks or anything yeah so we'll have that over sadani really wanted the results friday but they're having they're already having technical difficulties so they will get it i bet you they'll have it over the weekend but um the uh for the most part it's done all right uh, what else? The they are still working. Remember for Kirkuk, which is part of the Article One Forty area. They gave them nine days to do theirs for some reason. So that's still a little iffy. But we have a nice little article here. This is what prompted me to do this post. So I don't know who this person is. But MP stands for Member of Parliament. Hassan Asadi brings good news to a group of those covered by Article 140. So there's the title again. Oh, there's the title again. Um, and it's just a short little article. See that there? So he announced Thursday good news for a group of those covered by Article 140. After continuous follow-up with the Committee for Implementation of Article 140 of the Constitution of the Republic of Iraq, 
approval was obtained to promote the transactions. I think that means they're going to get paid on Sunday. So they have a receipt for the years 2018, 2019, and 2020. And on Sunday, they'll get paid. So we'll see. So I'll, I'll be watching. Uh, yeah, so let's see. So that is great. Look at this. Isn't that a nice looking vehicle? I would say it's comparable to, what is that? Not the, right, the Xfinity, Infinity, whatever. But it's Chinese. But look at this. A rocky firm becomes exclusive dealer for China's rocks motor so i thought that was pretty cool hmm who's gonna buy that and is it electric yeah they're electric vehicles so i mean really it can't be for a rock right <laughs> but it is it is um you're gonna market electric vehicles to a place that still doesn't have 24 hour electricity in some places hmm. But it's probably for the rich, the elite, which do have, you know, consistent electricity. All right, here this. So another thing that's been going on is the COP, which I don't know what it stands for. I just know it has something to do with climate change, green energy, whatever, right? All that. Anyway, so the, the let me see. Really what it is, is they want to shift away. They want to get away from fossil fuels, which that's even a joke. They shouldn't even call them fossil fuels because they're not. Because remember, that's what they told us. Oh, all the dinosaurs that were killed in the when the meteorite hit the earth, that's their bones and stuff. No, they're still, anyway, we know what oil is now. So, um, did I read the title to you? I don't think I did. Oil and gas are God's gift, and the world must invest in energy sources without exception. So, they're in the Middle East. They've had the last two, I believe, of these. Oh, here it is. Climate Change Conference, COP29. The last two have been in the Middle East which is basically floating in oil, right? So really you're going to go to the land where that's where they make their money off oil and tell them, hey, you know, let's try this green energy. And no one has said anything except Iraq flat out came out and said, no, we will not adhere to this. Um, we will be moving forward with our oil and gas. And they still got $30 million. The COP, whatever, still gave Iraq $30 million to look into re renewable green energy, I think they're calling it. So, you know, they do some, some solar, and I doubt they're going to do wind. But um, they need to focus on getting them people 24-hour electricity through the whole country. So... Yeah, but there were two great things in here. Um, again, let's see. His comments were in line with the opening speech of Azerbaijani president, and there's his name right there, who responded to Western criticism of his country's oil and gas industry, also describing these resources as a gift from God. So, yeah, so that happened, but yeah, so you could read that. That is good. I like that article. Here's another, well, Safwan Kwase, he's an economist, an economic expert. He said, big capitals benefit from the continued rise of the dollar in Iraq, but they haven't even, they haven't been talking about the dollar in the articles, right? I don't know what they've been talking about on TV because I know there's reports of other things, but I do what? I go by the articles, right? Even in um, the social media, oh, lots, 
the soccer team, football team, won. They beat Oman, I think. There's a lot of that in the news. All right. Um, so here he's saying that you need pros prosper from that. So why would they want things to change, right? Now, I'm sure you're aware of the escalation between Russia and Ukraine. I think I can say those things, right? Right? If you're not, that's look that up. That's in world world news, right? There's been escalation. But also there's been escalation because Ice Cream Land, BB, right, has petitioned to be able to bomb Iraq. So a lot of that has been in the news. A lot um, going back and forth. Iraq's been talking to the UN, you know. So there's all that stuff that's really bad, right? But it should be talked about. Um, so they're working on it. So mostly, when you read these articles about Putin having a phone call with Sudani, they mostly talk about oil. But let me just read you this. Uh, Putin discussed with Sudani Mo Moscow's cooperation with Baghdad in trade, economy, see that there, logistics and humanitarian services amid the unprecedented escalation in the region. So that, um, and this here, see that, increased risk of ice cream land launching a direct hit on Iraq. So there's that going on, right? Um, this was a good article, kind of. Because it contains a political aspect, parliamentary wealth, the oil and gas law faces difficulties. And I know that sounds negative, but it's always good, in my opinion, when they talk about it. The dispute is still ongoing between Baghdad and Erbil, but I don't think it's that much of a dispute, right? Because we know they got their dollar amount set. Um, they were going to go back to some time and pay them. And, you know, what are we waiting for? The 60 days, right? They, they decided they would take 60 days to a point like a go-between between Baghdad and Erbil. Yeah, so, but there they are still talking about the oil and gas law. All right, now look at this. This is pretty cool. If you don't know this right here, that's Sudani. And he's out and about because the people, there, there's not that many people on on the streets, right, since they were on curfew. So, he went to a bunch of different places. But this video, I'm actually going to play because I think it's only a minute. And there's no sound because it's in Arabic anyway. But this is, um, so here he is. See that? That's probably his vehicle that he got out of. All right. So he's shaking the guy's hand. And look at. So they're going through, now look at that market. That's a nice organized market, right? So there he is listening to that guy. He's probably like 30. And he probably hasn't been in a market for years, right? He probably has <laughs> someone to do his shopping for him. So they're just going along and looking at everything. And, let me see, they're going to show, that I don't know who that guy is, he must work there though, but um, my favorite part, so there he's taking pictures with some young guys, look at this, look at this lady, she's like, ah, <laughs> so um, yeah. So if you want to see that, it's here. If you click there, then you can watch it. And there's the link if you want to share it. 
And like I said, it's in Arabic. And I think it has music too. But it's just neat to see. But he went to some other workplaces. But those videos are on YouTube. Alright, so. Look at this. I'm not going to talk about this. Um, but, well, here I could read this. So the Economist, which is an, it's that that magazine, that famous, um, pro it's probably seventeen dollars an issue now. But I used to buy the Economist, and it was twelve dollars an issue. <laughs> so now I'm like, it's probably seventeen, maybe even more. But I don't, I don't buy it anymore anyway. But talk of a meeting between the Tea Man and Khomeini. So there's talks going on trying to de-escalate what's going on with the ICB, with um, nuclear aggression, right? Aggression is what I say instead of saying the three-letter word that starts with a W and ends with an R. So here's that meeting. This happened a couple of days ago. They had a, there were talks of a ceasefire. We vetoed it because I heard it didn't have um, anything to do with the hostages. And yeah, so here's um, more if, you know, if you want to talk about, if you want to read about that, you can. I know some people want to. Here, this guy, what is his name? Matthew Miller? Yeah, Matthew Miller. They had a press conference about, um, so the Iraq, no, Islamic resistance in Iraq, they are continuing to just drop kablooies on Israel, like three times a day, every day. <laughs> Some of them get dis deterred or whatever you know but many of them don't so they're actually going in and causing damage so he's saying um we gotta stop that and yeah so it's this i couldn't find the video see this says um part of the press conference so I had looked because I wanted to see the rest of it, but it wasn't there. And, you know, now who cares? So there's some question and answers there. Here, targeting at any moment. An Iraqi expert, the entity, which is Ice Cream Land, cannot strike Iraq without American approval. So they're saying part of the strategic framework is, hey, you're supposed to protect us, especially from the likes of ice cream land so if they're going to take it if ice cream land does strike them iraq is going to take it as we let them so so that's where we are it's not a pretty picture but it's a little because there's no news right like i said it's all about the census and other stuff it's a little tense oh also I guess apparently some people are excited because there were no auctions. I wouldn't get excited yet. The census was basically a holiday. Two-day holiday um, shut down. They were at the highest level military alert. So I doubt they were having auctions. Now, tomorrow's Friday. They won't have an auction anyway because it's the holy day. Saturday, they never have auctions. Now, if they don't have an auction on Sunday or Monday, then that might mean something. But I'm fairly certain they'll have an auction on Sunday. Because they cannot not have the auctions without changing the rate. Without putting new dollars out, new dinar notes out. All right, I think that's it. So you see, that's pretty boring, and I didn't want to waste your time with that. But I was, I do like the this article that came out about them starting. I believe that's what it's saying. They're gonna start paying 
these Article 140 people, just one group, right? It says a group, and that would be good. I think that well, it would definitely be good for them, right? They're getting three years back pay. So, all right. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope it helps. You, you still got the best ticket in town, in my opinion. So, um, accumulate while we wait for the rate to appreciate. Don't miss any mails and pay all your bills. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks, new subscribers on the plat the different platforms. What else? If there's a like, join, subscribe, follow, whatever type button there, and if you haven't already, activate that because I don't post regularly. So if you activate that function and all things work like they're supposed to, then when I update, you'll be notified. All right. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your morning, night, noon, whatever time frame you're enjoying this content. And until next time.